Man, things just got even worse for Lickspittle Scobie. Publisher of his book has now come forward and said, nice try, buddy. You're not telling the truth. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signar. Pre-taped this last night with Sue's back. Sue Smith, thank you for being here. As we were wrapping up our live, this broke, and I have some stuff to do in the morning, so I wanted to make sure we got this for you. I, I think, I don't know which channel I loaded to. I think we're on Planet, maybe Palace. Subscribe to both. But this was an important I want to react to, and I wanted to spotlight this as its own video with Sue because we've caught them yet again, Sue. Omen is now caught in a total lie. He's been lying for this whole book tour. Not only are we going to show you what the publisher has now said, the translator has said, I want to reiterate these two quick clips from this interview where this interviewer on ITV just destroys him and, and says it to his face. And Sue is very gratefully come here to prove, help us prove why he's lying. Before we get to the clips again, let's go to this new news that came in last night. Dutch translator of Omid Scobie's Endgame says the names of the two royal racists were in the manuscript she was sent after author insisted he never submitted a book with them in it. So this is the woman. Uh, it's credited in the Dutch version. Um, and uh, Sash, uh, Shashikia Peters said she did not add the names to the Dutch version of the book, Endgame. Speaking of the Mail Online, from her home in, in uh, Arntham, she says, as a translator, I translate what's in front of me. The names of the royals were there in black and white. I did not add them. I just did what I was paid to do, and that was translate the book from English into Dutch. And here she is. Her claims appear to contradict Scobie, who told ITV this morning he did not include the name of the royals, accusing accused of discussing the skin color of Meghan Harry's son, Archie, when he submitted the completed manuscript to the publisher. Now, the, the quotes continue. As he said, he never submitted a book that had the names in it. He's very careful how he speaks, and we'll get to that in a second. But the book has now been pulled from uh, stores in the Netherlands, and, and it's they're quickly grabbing it because of this coming out there. Uh, Miss Peters, though, was shocked and nervous at the firestorm her translations caused. She did not say when she received the manuscript from the Dutch publisher, Xander Gudegrivers. She said that the pages were distributed between herself and fellow translator Nellie uh, to transcribe. When the, told the book's author Scobie had denied the names were in the manuscript, Mrs. Peters said, I don't know why he would say that. I have been translating for many years. This is the first time anything like this has happened. This is not something I wanted to be involved in. This is something, this has been upsetting. I do not want to talk about it much more. Here's the version she translated. And again, Oma just decided to throw her to the wolves, Sue. Oh, I didn't do it. It's her fault. Mrs. Peter and her colleague are credited with the translation, the preface for the book, which has been described as poisonous for its attacks of the royal family, in particular, Charles, Camilla, and Princess of Wales. It's understood they were sent the English version of Endgame by Xander, the publisher. Uh, and so there you go. The Netherlands publisher simply referred to an error that occurred in the Dutch edition, not making any reference to a translation issue, suggesting there may be a difference of opinion. Uh, opinions may vary. How, how, how ironic, Sue, that opinions may vary on this. Colleagues of Miss Pierce would, uh, said would be unthinkable that the experienced translators would add the names without checking with the publisher. Paul Jans, who runs a book translation service, I find it unthinkable that a translator would mention these names that weren't in this version, especially such a sensitive matter. To me, it does not make sense. As a book translator, you work with what is in front of you. I think they must have used a version with the names in it. Another experienced book translator in Amsterdam responded as well. Why would they choose these particular names out of all these they could choose, said the translator. They are very experienced professionals who have so many credits to their name. Why would they risk doing this? And who is to say they got the right names? Peters has over 20 years experience translating books from English into Dutch, including fiction works and cookbooks. Her colleague has translated books for long bestsellers. Uh, it comes as well-placed sources, told Mail. Buckingham Palace is considering all options, meaning legally, etc. cetera. So, uh, yeah, I all, I understand the policy considering all options open to them. However, the key thing is for them is His Majesty responding in the most eloquent way possible by going on with business and not letting it distract from vastly more important issues regarding the future of the planet and bilaterals with other world leaders, including those impacted by the situation in the Middle East. 
right, rightfully so. This is the last thing anybody should really be focusing on, but that's what Omid Scobie has made his whole living on. Um, so there you guys, there, those are the quotes. I thought there might be one more from her. Uh, here is, I'm obviously, here, uh, he said, I'm frustrated. I wouldn't say I'm upset about it, but I've never submitted a book that had their names in it. So I can only talk about my version. He's very careful, isn't he, Sue? And that's why I wanted to reiterate and get you to help me back up on these clips. Here's the first to play quickly where we can show the beginning of what is this relationship to Megan? A lot of it feels like a bit of a hatchet job against the royal family, okay? And, you know, Harry and Meghan, they kind of are largely untouched from negativity from your pen in this. So, you know, a lot of the speculation is that you are a mouthpiece for Harry and yeah. Meghan. So what is your relationship with Harry and Meghan at the moment? I'm not their friend. I've never sat down with Meghan privately for interviews. I've never uh, exchanged information with Meghan. I'm not in their private world in any way whatsoever. Are you fighting their corner? No. That, the speaking that, we went in much more depth with barristers. Uh, check out our live from last night. It's a very great video. But Sue, how absurd is this answer? He's trying to say, very, very like use these very weird specific generalities that can clearly be used. I'm not their friend, but he could be their best friend. Uh, I've not ever met her f in private for interviews. Could have met publicly or with others in the room for something other than interviews. There's so much here that's so weird to read. And then he says he's not in her corner, even though he proceeds to say in the rest of the interview that he does support her and what they did. How, how much of a lie is this in your view? It's a massive lie. It's all word semantics. Uh, as I stated yesterday, it's no different than when in court they said, do you have Harry's number? And he said, no, I do not have Harry's number. But then, then nobody asked him if he had Megan's number, because I'm pretty sure if they it, it would have come out that he's got Megan's number. He said he's never socialized with them. But then in the back of one of his books, he admits that he has been in, in a I think it was a cocktail party with them where he spoke to them. That's socializing. Mm -hmm. He seems to use word semantics a lot to try to get around things. He said, I've never exchanged information with her. Well, what do you call it when he gave, when, when she gave that information to Jason Knopf to give to him? That's an exchange of information. Well, I'm glad, because uh, I want you to comment on it, but let's play that portion here. I have that one queued up right here because this is the biggest part of it all. And the interviewer, to his credit, calls them out saying, well, no, you have... Megan was involved in your last book. We know Megan was in touch with the first book and, and, and sent some advice your well, way. Well, she wasn't in touch with the first book. Via an aide. She spoke to her communications <laughs> officer, and I discovered that okay. at the same time as the rest of the world so it did. Happened. But it, um, so it so happened. So it happened. It's so, the job of a communications officer at the palace to deal with the press. But if you're not dealing with them, it's, it would be very surprising that any of her staff or, or aides would talk to you, so people are questioning your sources. Can I ask you a question? Have sure. you ever had this conversation with people that write source quotes about Camilla, Charles, William, Kate? Do they ever get called friends of, mm -hmm. mouthpieces of, cheerleaders? Yes. Or is it simply because- <laughs> Yes, or simply as everyone- people don't like the narratives. They're afraid of my reporting. I'm a victim and I'm- uh... I purport in my reporting because it makes people feel uncomfortable. And rather than us engage in healthy conversation and discourse about it, it's easy- which this guy's trying to do, by the way, totally have a healthy discourse. And uh -huh. Scobie's completely pivoting, distracting you, moving the changing the subjects, denying the fact that, yes, there's a very fair question as to what your relationship to Megan is, given that she and her aides yeah. gave you the book. But now I go to you, Sue, because Scobie's clearly trying to make everyone forget. And you reminded me there are emails, correct, of Prince Harry acknowledging that Megan could not be associated with this, correct? That is correct. Harry wrote an email, it's a very famous email, where he said, we have to be able to say that we were not involved in this. Now, what Omid is suggesting is that Megan gave these bullet points to the communications gentleman, that was Jason Kanoff, and that Jason Kanoff gave it to him, but he had no idea that these bullet points that Jason Kanoff were handing him came from Megan. I don't, how could you not know that that came from Megan since there's information on there about her family that Jason Kanoff, there's no way he would know it. I mean, it's just common sense. She absolutely helped with the first book. He got caught perjuring in court. She got caught perjuring in court. Harry got caught perjuring in court. And the UK judge wanted to say it was a lapse in memory. It was not a lapse in memory. She didn't think that Jason Knopf was going to be able to come forward and hand over all that information. And then all of a sudden she was caught. 
Right. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you lie, if you're willing to lie when you swear under oath to God on your the damnation of your soul that you are telling the truth and you lie, that's for me, no credibility. Nothing she says has credibility. Nothing she does is credible. Her and Harry, they have fallen so far down. You know that in the United States here, nobody's really interested in them anymore. They're not invited to any A-list parties. You don't see them anywhere. That last variety thing, WME had to arrange it. She apparently wanted to speak. Uh, it's being reported. They told her no. She was on the red carpet longer than she was supposed to be because that was the only attention she was going to get. <laughs> so she walked across the carpet and they couldn't get her off the carpet. It's There's video of this too, of, of people like pushing her like... It was, it was very her down the road because you know why? Because Margot Robbie was coming right after her. And I think Megan wanted a picture with her and they were like, no, move. So yes, Margot Robbie's team would is, probably be like, nope, sorry. We don't, we don't. Yeah. yeah it's no, 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 anyway, no. she, she thinks she's in that same sphere and she's not, and she's trying to be. She's she, never been in that sphere. Everybody's like, oh, she's with the A-list. She's going back to A-list Hollywood. She was never in A-list Hollywood. She was a D-list actress on a cable show that until she met Harry, most people had never even heard of. Right, and a she, show that is now ballooned in reruns just because of luck, let's keep it honest, and now she's exploiting now that the strike's over. Oh my God, and he was trying to get her face out there, piping more projects to come. Well, we'll see, and we'll be reporting on them. And then most of the time we're over on Palace. I, again, I don't know where I loaded this. I had to bank some stuff the night before because I do have an exciting thing we're taping, guys, today, this afternoon. I'm a little busier, so apologies that I taped this in advance, but sometimes we do. But uh, lots more coming, guys. Trust me, lots more. Not only on this topic, but other stuff. If you like this topic, make sure you subscribe to Popcorn Palace and Popcorn Planet when it's a bigger story and there's not much else helping we go. And I wanted to reiterate just the lies here. The the fact that she lied under oath and now this lick spittle, as I call him, <laughs> thanks to Pierce, is just so <gasps> manipulatively trying to trick everyone and just keep cor the corruption going and then the lies, the charlatan, I can't stand it. As you said, you don't like hypocrisy, neither do I. So I appreciate you being here to help us, Sue. And make sure, guys, if you like this sort of stuff and you want more insight, go subscribe to Sue Smith over on YouTube as well. She's a great royal royal reporter over there. You'll get all your information. Uh, and uh, thank you for stepping in tonight. Guys, so much more to come here on the channel. Make sure, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe, check out these videos, hit the like, and tell us what you think down below. See you soon, guys.